In this section, we will understand what is n-type semiconductor. Till now, in this course, we have been understanding intrinsic semiconductor. So, let me start with the intrinsic semiconductor, and then we will go and see what is n-type semiconductor. I am taking an intrinsic silicon, which is represented by its bond and band model, as shown here. And this is at t equals to 0 Kelvin where the valence band is completely filled with the valence electrons and conduction band is completely empty. From bond model perspective, all the bonds are intact. Now I'm going to add some impurities or dopants to this intrinsic semiconductor in a controlled way. And this process of adding these impurities in a controlled way is called doping. So basically, we are doing doping to this intrinsic semiconductor with an impurity uh, we are choosing here, arsenic. Arsenic's atomic number is 33. So once we dope this intrinsic semiconductor, it won't be pure semiconductor anymore. So the modified semiconductor, I'm taking the crystal to be like this, and now it's no more intrinsic, so I'm simply writing silicon, because the impurities that we add will be in small quantities, so that's why the basic structure of silicon doesn't change. I've taken the same band and bond model from the left-hand side, and now we will see, because of this doping, what will happen to these two models. If you see, as we have added arsenic, now I'm going to assume that one of the silicon atoms in this crystal structure that I'm showing is getting substituted by this arsenic atom. So we call this substitutional doping. Before we substitute, it's a good idea to see the electronic configuration of arsenic. As arsenic's atomic number is 33, 1s orbital gets completely filled, 2s completely filled, 2p completely filled. So 3s is 3s2, 3p6, 3d10. So, so far we have in first shell 2 electrons, second shell 8 electrons, third shell 18 electrons, and 4s2, 4p3. So we'll have five electrons in the fourth shell. So total we'll get 33, which means the valence shell has five electrons, which means the arsenic is pentavalent element. So now let me substitute in this place of silicon that this is arsenic. And as arsenic has five electrons, the four electrons will be in the bond formations with the neighbors. And now we have the fifth electron, which will not be in any bond formation. So this will be loosely bound to the arsenic atom. So we are representing all the five electrons of arsenic, which are valence electrons. Only four are participating in the bonds, and one is loosely bound to arsenic. So how does this modify the band model that we have already here? So the arsenic fifth electron as it is loosely bound so i'm representing the energy level of arsenic here which represents that the electrons are present in these energy levels and the energy level that we see this is ec and this is ev and this energy level we need to name it so this energy level should be named, and what should we name this? So to understand that and name it, let me see what will happen to this uh, situation when we increase the temperature. So I'm increasing the temperature from T equals to zero to T equals to T1 Kelvin, where let's say this is room temperature. In that case, what would happen to this uh, band and bond model? Because now, as the temperature is increased, this loosely bound fifth electron of arsenic would break free and this will be a free electron for conduction. So similarly in band model, all the electrons that are present at this uh, dopant energy level will be sent to the conduction band. So we'll have all the electrons in conduction band. Because the electron is free, the arsenic atom would become now an ion because one negative charge is less for arsenic, so arsenic can be taken as a positive ion. So we'll represent here a positive ion at this energy levels. The arsenic atom basically donated an electron to the conduction band, so which is going to increase our conductivity of the semiconductor compared to an intrinsic semiconductor at the same temperature. So this energy level, we are going to call it as donor 
energy level and this kind of doping is called donor doping arsenic is called donor dopant in general we can say the pentavalent elements if you are adding to silicon they will act as donor dopants and of course at this temperature some of the silicon bonds might break because the presence of phonons the vibrations of atoms in the lattice some of the valence electrons would find enough energy to actually come to conduction band because the electron is in conduction band it will leave a space in the valence band which we call hole the number of electrons present in the conduction band are far greater than the number of holes in the valence band because the carriers generated due to thermal excitation would be very less from valence band to conduction band compared to the carriers contributed by this doping atoms so here the number of electrons per centimeter cube in the doped semiconductor is far greater than the hole concentration so we call this kind of semiconductor as n type semiconductor now to understand the difference of this n to p let me take the intrinsic semiconductor and increase the temperature for it let me say the temperature is t1 kelvin so for intrinsic semiconductor as temperature is increased some of the bonds will break and electrons will break free to become available for conduction so when they do so they leave an empty space in the bonds which we are going to call as holes similarly in the band model the valence electrons would acquire enough energy to go to conduction band so some of them and we'll have some electrons in the conduction band so similarly as they go they leave empty spaces in the valence band which we are calling holes but in intrinsic semiconductor case the number of electrons would be equal to the number of holes whereas in the extrinsic semiconductor we call the semiconductor as extrinsic which is an n type semiconductor where the number of electrons in conduction band are far greater than the number of holes in the valence band uh, we said if we dope the silicon with pentavalent elements then the semiconductor would become n type semiconductor so along with arsenic there are other elements in the uh, pentavalent group so let me represent them so in five valent group we have nitrogen phosphorus and arsenic and antimony so we have seen example with arsenic the only difference would be if you dope it with other elements is the only difference would be where the donor dopant energy level would come in the energy band gap so we represent the ec minus ed and this is the number that gets modified for different doping it will be 0.0 0.054 electron volts for arsenic and it will be 0.045 electron volts for phosphorus now a simple question that comes into mind is as we are doing this addition of impurities intentionally how much quantities of these impurities should we add to silicon so i'm going to take the amount of doping that we are doing here is n suffix d representing how many donor dopants the d represents donor dopants that we are adding per centimeter cube in the semiconductor and for silicon this doping would be somewhere from an order of 10 power 14 to all the way 10 power 19 or 20 so what this means is if we remember the atomic concentration in silicon is 5 times 10 power 22 which means we have 5 times 10 power 22 atoms per centimeter cube in silicon we are saying we are adding a concentration of donor dopants from 10 power 14 to 10 power 19 so let me take this 10 power 19 doping the highest doping that we have talked about where 10 power 19 donor dopant atoms are added out of 5 times 10 power 22 silicon atoms which means this will give us a number 1 over 5 times 10 power 3 which means we have added one donor dopant atom for every 5000 silicon atoms so this itself we are calling a high doping so in terms of physical structure in the crystal it doesn't modify much so that's why we assumed the energy band diagram would almost be the same as intrinsic except that the energy levels introduced by these donor dopants is added to that band diagram and another point to note is we're going to assume throughout this course that the doping we are doing is uniform what do i mean by uniform doping is 
Throughout the semiconductor, wherever you see, pick any point and see the doping concentration that we have done around that point in one centimeter cube would be same as you see anywhere in that semiconductor, which means the doping concentration anywhere in that semiconductor material is constant. It doesn't change with respect to distance.